also another video that I wanted to watch where they um, talk about the evolution of Final Fantasy. From Final Fantasy, from the very first Final Fantasy all the way to Seven Rebirth, uh, with one of the uh, developers, actually. Uh, I think his name is Yoshinori Katase. And yeah, let's do it. Would you please give a big, warm welcome to Yoshinori Kitase and his translator, Gavin. I don't think I can turn this up any lo uh, louder, chat. Hello, my name is Yoshinori Kitase, and I am the producer of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth from Square Enix. So thank you so much everyone for coming today and thank you also to BAFTA for creating this opportunity for us. Yes, I can. Never mind. <laughs> so uh, hopefully you can uh, listen away to my talk today. I'm not just going to talk about games. I'm going to talk a little bit about my career, uh, where I came from as well. So I uh, hope you enjoy it. じゃあ、ネクストスライドプリーズ。はい。え、まあ、1978年ですけども、私が11歳の時ですね、え、父親に連れられて初めて映画館でスターウォーズを見ました。So <笑> Sorry, Chet. Just turning this up louder. So, both okay, myself yeah. and my father, we were just overwhelmed by the magic. So, this is the loudest I can turn it. From the beginning scene where you see the awesome size and majesty of the Star Destroyer through to the end and the final attack on the Death Star, it really was something to witness. It seems like it's still too quiet, too. Star Wars recently? あの、ま、僕大体毎回こういうのやってるんですけど、1から9まであのエピソードがあると思うんですけど、その3話ずつ区切ってちょっとアンケートを取りたいと思います。So, I asked this to a lot of people actually. I just want to ask you guys a question. Do a little survey today. I mean, Star Wars has got a lot of films, but there's the numbered ones you got from number 1 through to episode number 9. I want to split those into three different sections. You got 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9. <laughs> So I'm Quality is not that great. <laughs> if you get the group of films that you like the best, start clapping so I know who likes which ones best. So first of all, what about numbers one, two, and three, which star Anakin? <laughs> hey. <laughs> okay, what about the ones with Ray and Kylo Ren? That's numbers seven, eight, and nine. <laughs> but the most famous ones of them last on purpose. Okay, what about four, five, six with Luke and Leia and everyone? <laughs> if any more of you are killed by those punks, I'll drag you back from hell and kill you again. You're a good audience tonight. I'm a car. <laughs> That was really loud. <laughs> Thank you for the contribution. How are you doing tonight? <laughs> I, had, I had turned my computer all the way up because I couldn't hear this video. <laughs> so, as you guys have handily proved for me there, um, Star Wars obviously was a massive cultural phenomenon. It was something that resonated with all people of all ages from myself back in the day i was a small child to my father of the older generation uh male female everyone uh it was like a major cultural phenomenon it really resonated with, with <laughs> how you doing tonight megar pretty good but you besides your ears getting a good job <laughs> i'm good too <laughs> We're actually watching a developer interview of Yoshinori Katase, and he's talking about the evolution of Final Fantasy. He's starting out with how uh, uh, Star Wars inspired him to make this Final Fantasy games and everything, you know? And that was what uh, generated my interest and got me to want to go on and learn more about film production. So that was how I wanted to learn about uh, films and how they were made. Star was really, yeah, yeah. So yeah, around the same time as Star Wars, actually, in the gaming world, we had Space Invaders come out, and Space Invaders was a huge hit, not just in Japan where it came from, but around the whole world. 
And I too was no exception to that. I remember playing Space Invaders in the arcades day after day, all day long. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm、uh, interested to see this. I was really interested to see this video yesterday, but、um, didn't have much time, so decided to watch it today. And... And then in 1986, I think it was. I remember I went to my friend's house, and he had the、Nintendo、two favorites combined. Yeah. <laughs> and he had Super Mario.、Uh, I didn't have a console at that time, but I remember playing that game, and I was I was just blown away by it. Yeah, he, he, I don't know if you saw it, Megar, but he asked the audience like to clap、uh, for、uh, for whatever Star Wars is their favorite, and he asked for one through nine. Every, of course, everybody, you know, of course, cheer for four through six. Everybody cheered that the most, and and nobody cheered from seven, eight, nine, really. <laughs> I regretted that, and I went out the next day and said I have to buy my own console so that doesn't happen again.、Uh, and I went out and I got one,、uh, and then I just got lost in games from there. Starting with the Legend of Zelda, I became a game addict for life. Hey, Legend of Zelda, nice. <laughs> So I was、uh, absorbed in these games and sat there at home playing them day after day. But、uh, next to me,、uh, my father. I remember he、uh, looked at me with quite an exasperated look when I was playing them. Well, Star Wars, they were together. 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 Hey, Lamb! Thank you for the contribution. Appreciate it. Chat, we're we're eight thousand away. <laughs> How you doing tonight, Lamb? <laughs> Several skills, more than good. まあその後ですね、大学に行きまして、大学では映画制作を学んで、まあその後卒業後にはアニメーションの制作会社、アニメーションや CM を手掛けるアニメの制作会社に入社しました。So moving on, then I doing good. That's good. What's this program? Uh, this is um, they're they're interviewing uh Yoshinori Kitase, one of the developers of Final Fantasy, and um, he's he's uh this video is uh him talking about the evolution of Final Fantasy all the way from Final Fantasy one to Final Fantasy seven Rebirth, and I was interested in watching this video, seeing what he says and everything, you know. Just a thing for mothers. <laughs> I didn't think about that. <laughs> hey, the original Final Fantasy One. That's something we have not played on stream yet, Chat. We need to play the original Final Fantasy One. I've played Final Fantasy One, but it's the remake. I haven't played the original yet on stream, or at all, actually. I've never played the original Final Fantasy One. <laughs> Yeah, I'm doing good, Lamb. Thanks for asking. <laughs> so to explain what really grabbed me about Final Fantasy was it felt like a very adult、uh, game with a very smart, very stylish aesthetic to it. And as you can see here, the、um, the UI, the user interface, the text on screen, and, and the, just the general screen design, very reminiscent of what you had on the Apple Macintosh computer at the time. And it was just that much higher level of refinement. Mm. Original was harder, in your opinion? Oh yeah, I've heard.、Uh, I've heard games back in the '80s and '90s are super hard. A lot of games are <laughs> compared to today, especially compared to today. <laughs> Everything's super easy now, but、well, except for Souls games. But you know what I mean. <laughs> So the next major, really big point that drew me in was the art here by <laughs> Yoshitaka Amano.、Um, and compared to the other games, especially in Japan, the RPGs of the day, which used a very comic book style, a very cartoony style of, of graphics and art, which was good in itself. But compared to that, the art that you got from、uh, from Mr. Amano was was like high art. It was just that. Much I definitely have to try it out. I want to see how hard it is. Brilliant. <laughs> まあゲームシステムをよりコアなプレイヤーを対象にしたようなあの凝ったもので、まああのもので作られていたので、まあファイナルファンタジーによってまあ
。私は、西がこうビデオゲームの将来を見ることができました。And the game system, the, the gameplay itself, seemed very much aimed at the hardcore game base.、Um, so I really saw in Final Fantasy that this was perhaps the future of games as I saw them. For anybody that has not played Final Fantasy II, it is very unique. Compared to other Final Fantasies. Someone with my background who'd studied animation and storytelling and was really interested in that, that this was a new medium for telling stories in a visual medium.、Uh, I feel like games used to be harder because you couldn't just look at a guide and they didn't have time to test as much,、uh, which led to a bunch of bullshit making exit encounters, making it three. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, back then, we, yeah, didn't have guides or anything. Like, oh, I couldn't imagine、uh, trying to figure out Final Fantasy or Legend of Zelda, you know what I mean? Back then. <laughs> Without a strategy guide, it's like, ugh. <laughs> I joined Square Enix or Squaresoft as we were back then in 1990.、Uh, yeah, Final Fantasy 2 is. Yeah. It's like very、that. unique. It's、I、like, it's, it's, it doesn't have any levels. Like, you can't level up to 99 or anything. And you have to level up just by taking damage, pretty much. I mean, you could level up、uh, just by fighting in general, but. I remember, like, when I was playing Final Fantasy 2. I would always attack myself so that way I could level up faster, you know? <laughs> Which was actually a spin off of the Final Fantasy series. It was actually in of the, the Mana series, or what later became the Mana series in Japan. But I worked as an event planner、uh, on that first title. I never played this game, Final Fantasy Adventure. Maybe that's something else we could play as well. Well, not maybe, but definitely. <laughs> so,、uh, What that job involved was、uh, taking the scripts for the game and then actually turning that into the levels that the player would be、um, exploring later on、uh, and doing the programming of that as well. I love how you can use dual weapons in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That was pretty nice for sure. Getting those extra hits in and everything. I did like that a lot. It's not just one hit all the time, you know? You could get multiple hits、uh, depending on you know, what you, where you are and everything. One scene that I made for this game still stands out to me.、Uh, it was a scene featuring a chocobo, which is a familiar character that we see in Final Fantasy even today. And this was a really noble, self sacrificing chocobo who gave up his life to save the hero of the game. I have to look up the Final Fantasy Adventure. And fans reacted very well to it, which was great to see. And that really did help build my confidence. Definitely see what it's about. I've, I've never heard of Final Fantasy Adventure. Never heard of it, yeah. They got free play days for Final Fantasy XIV on Xbox right now, but I don't know if I want to download it. It's like 90 gigs, yeah. <laughs> I would say it's definitely worth it, uh, uh, Lamb. For the Super Famicom, Super Nintendo Entertainment System, and the extra technical power that came with it. I mean, I've never downloaded it, I've never played it myself, but I would say it's definitely worth it. <laughs> we could re、uh, recruit Lamb and we play, all play 14 online. Oh, yeah, definitely. For sure. We've never been able to use 25 screen at any one time, but with the new Super Nintendo hardware, that shot up to 256 at once. And in the sound that we had available as well, we now had a dedicated eight channel stereo sound chip. <laughs> did they skip Final Fantasy 3 or did I just miss it? <laughs> <clears throat> Think it'd be better if I had the homies? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely.、I've, in my opinion, it's a, lot it's a lot better to play with people you know or people you're friends with, like online or just、uh, in person. Than it is to play with just random people, you know what I mean? Because, as I said before, in my experience,、uh, if you play with random people, they can be assholes sometimes, you know? They can take the game way too seriously <laughs> and just be like, just downright rude to you. <laughs> So, over the next couple of years, I worked hard and tried to contribute as much as I could to all the game projects that I was assigned to. But because of the, the Super Nintendo and all the new things it allowed us to do, you get lonely there by yourself,、um, big ass world, and all those people you don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. 
We must have missed Final Fantasy 3. <clears throat> or they skipped it. Final Fantasy 5, that was finally when I was accepted and moved over to the mainline Final Fantasy development team. I remember him saying that. Uh, and the reason why they uh, asked me to join the Final Fantasy team and work on Five was actually down to the decision of the director of the game at the time, uh, Mr. Hironobu Sakaguchi. Uh, and he'd seen my work on the, the emotional chocobo scene in Final Fantasy Adventure uh, and decided that he wanted me on board for his team. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. You ever try that person's game? Oh, Persona game? Uh, no, not yet. <laughs> uh, we will, definitely. In the future, for sure. <laughs> That's on my bucket list of games to play. So, on Final Fantasy V, I was part of the scenario and planning... When I'm playing it, I'll definitely let y'all know in the title of the stream. Or, uh, uh, you know, the, the notifications that you guys get. And I carried on that director role for Final Fantasy VII. Okay, they must have skipped three because they skipped six. <laughs> it's long, just warning. Okay. <laughs> He's finished up three remake? Oh yeah? How was it? So moving on to Final Fantasy VII, and some people know this, but uh, interestingly enough, Final Fantasy VII started life in 1994, and it was supposed to be another 2D game for the Super Nintendo. <laughs> I remember you telling me that, Megar. Yesterday, actually. Shit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Drop my water bottle. <laughs> so, we were inspired by the developer's mother's death? Really? So, we'd made a, proto a prototype for Final Fantasy VII, and we were about to move on with the project, but uh, it just so happened at the same time the Chrono Trigger team, who were developing in parallel, uh, well, Chrono Trigger is another game we need to play. We moved over to help them uh, to complete their project and put our own game on board. Huh. Stove loved his stories more gritty than the others, yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so we managed to get Chrono Trigger across the line and finish it off, and then in 1995 we thought, okay, we can get back to work on Final Fantasy VII. Hmm. We love Chrono Sugar. Yeah, that's a, yeah. I haven't played anything, chat. PlayStation 1. Yep. So yeah, um, as you can imagine, uh, the fact that the, the PlayStation changed so much, the specs of that machine changed what we could do so much was uh, was such a big change. あの、ま、同じ時期にですね、映画の方でま、目を向けると、ターミネーターってジュラシックパーク、そしてこう、トイストーリーの方、やはり so at the same time, actually, you look at the world of film, and they were undergoing a very similar kind of change uh, with a, a more and more introduction of um, CG graphics. So you had films at that time like Terminator 2, then through to things like Jurassic Park and ultimately Toy Story. So they were seeing a, a massive rise in, in this CG and this same kind of technology as well. So, interestingly, we talk about Jurassic Park because, quite ironically, around the same time as that came out, Sony were doing their first PlayStation 1 uh, technical demos, and they were using a Tyrannosaurus to show the 3D graphics it could do. So, really, that was a turning point. It marked one step of... Uh, the film industry and the, the techniques they use and the game making industry coming that much closer together. <laughs> Sorry, commercial. Airheads have more fun. Sorry. <laughs> that was loud. <laughs> I just need a, I need a spring for YouTube with that, uh, was it YouTube Premium?
Marshall's Road, you said back that was glorious, yeah. <laughs> I was wondering how much they were going to show. <laughs> it's truly the most unique game changer of the 90s, but yeah. <laughs> Man, I wish, I wish I was alive during the 90s, just to see that, you know? <laughs> I mean, I was alive in 98, but <laughs> I wish I was aware, more aware of the 90s. With that move into 3D graphics that um, we now in the games industry, we're using the kinds of supercomputers and the animation tools that uh, the film animators were using, stuff that I was actually familiar with myself. So, interestingly enough, um, the majority of the budget we spent on Final Fantasy VII was actually spent on buying uh, supercomputers, workstations, and software to huh. graphics. Interesting. If anybody's interested in what the budget for or the original Final Fantasy VII was, I looked on the internet, it said $45 million. <laughs> like, <laughs> I previously worked as an animator, so I actually did use some of those very same tools. Uh, basically like, holy shit, fun. that's a lot of money. <laughs> uh, and I used that to actually do some of the animation of, of the characters in the game. So, it may be a bit embarrassing to say that now, but the motions you just saw there, where you see Cloud jump down from the train, you see all the members of Avalanche come out and they take down the Shinra soldiers with their martial arts, I animated all that myself. <laughs> no, if I did that now, I'd, uh, people would get very angry with me and I'd be a bit embarrassed. <laughs> まあ、2D ピクセルのキャラクターを3Dモデルにまあ変化したことで、まあリアルさがまあしたので、まあ現在のまあ標準と比べるとね、まだまだあの原始的ではありましたが、まあ3Dへ当時はね、3Dへ移
almost and i can bet you another 30 years later we're probably going to be playing like two terabyte games and or three terabyte games and it's going to be like man 150 gigabytes is so small <laughs> So previously, before Final Fantasy VII, we generally worked with smaller teams of about 20 to 30 developers to make any one game. With Final Fantasy VII, that shot up so much, and I'd say we lost <laughs> by at least five times that amount. Maybe at the peak of the team, when the most people were involved, it was maybe even ten times that amount. Wow. <laughs> Damn, look at that picture. And Seven Rebirth is going to be even like 50 times more of the staff. But of course, the game is not something made by one person. So all of the team were really strongly involved in that. And it really is thanks to all of their efforts that we were able to, to make that awesome game in the end. It'd be like more than a thousand people just more working on Seven Remake and Seven Rebirth. You know how long the credits are in Seven Remake? And they're going fast, too. It's like 18 minutes of credits, and they're going pretty fast. So the way Final Fantasy VII came about, uh, obviously we had the different teams with their own uh, specializations and their own skills. We had some really skilled, some really um, talented guys in every single one of those sections. And of course, good ideas don't just come from one section. There isn't an ideas section. They can come out in any of those teams. So we all came together and discussed and shared those ideas. And the, uh, the amalgamation of those ideas is what made Final Fantasy VII in the end. I wonder if they're going to show clips from other Final Fantasies too. From Final Fantasy VII over the preceding the um, years after that, uh, <laughs> technology, game development continued to evolve and, and grow. Oh yeah. Oh, they skip nine. <laughs> Final Fantasy X, woo! So when we came to Final Fantasy X, we were able to make another big innovation, and we added voices to Final Fantasy for the first time. Yep. <laughs> it's my favorite Final Fantasy! So we also implemented a lot of other new technologies for Final Fantasy X, uh, including motion capture for the first time to get true, realistic, lifelike motions in the characters. Oh, also yeah. Facial animation that could match the content of the dialogue to the lip sync. Oh, yeah. It's so glorious. <laughs> that didn't exist? Yeah. <laughs> so we played it. Yeah. Apparently 3 and 6 don't exist either. <laughs> They're 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 skipping uh, every third Final Fantasy, three, six, and nine. <laughs> There's the, they might skip a uh, twelve next. Because of the limits of the technology, with the dawn of voice actors and and motion actors, and thanks to the real life performances of these these talented artists, we were able to then move that much closer to a true realistic depiction of characters, and they became that much more subtle in how they express them. Oh, yeah, it's so fucking amazing. <laughs> it's so great. <laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs> So, of course, it's not just the size of the teams that increased with this extra technology, but the length of time it took to make a game also increased drastically. Yeah, we were, uh, we were talking about this yesterday, actually. Man teams, generally, it would take a year, maybe a year and a half to yeah. make a single game. When we're looking at these bigger hundreds of hundreds of people teams, uh, you can see many years before the single game comes out. Uh, which I was saying yesterday, I mean, I totally understand, yeah. But at the same time, I don't want it to be too long. You know. I want us to think they were real, they were inject us with geostigma. You had each different section, had its very special specialist job it needed to do. You had experts in that field within that team. So obviously the nature of, of the work became more specialized and, and we had to split down into much more specialist smaller teams. Wow, they skipped 11 and 12. <laughs> and they got the 13 trilogy. Yeah. 
あの規模というのは非常に限界がありますのでそれを補うために協力会社さん外注さんを含めていろんな会社さんに協力してもらってあの非常に巨大なプロジェクトとして芸が作られていくようになりました。So you're looking at the changes in this era, and I think we can definitely see that we are now very much using the same kinds of techniques and pretty much the same technology that film CGI. This is 13 male returns. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and again, like I say, with the big teams, and the much longer development periods. And the Hell yeah. The work involved in a single game. The other big change was we now have to look to outsourcing and have collaboration with various outside companies in order to create everything we need to, to make that game. まあ、そしていよいよですね、FF7 になるんですけど、You look at Final Fantasy 13, it looks so fucking realistic, man. Especially for PS3 era. Like, holy shit. ファンの皆様から熱い要望があったので、FF7 を再度登場される時期が来たのだと私は思いました。So, finally, we come 20 odd years after the release of Final Fantasy 7. And obviously, let's get 14 and 15. There's a lot of call for people to see it again, to see a remake over the years. And finally, we came to the decision that yes, we're going to go ahead and do one. まああのまあここにはそのメディアの方も teeth sensitivity is so common. Teeth sensitivity. This commercial so long. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, chat. <laughs> Final Fantasy XIII の時に10年ぐらい前なんですけども、やはりあのいろんな国にメディアツアーを回って、メディアの方とインタビューをいろいろたくさん受けてきましたけども。So again, there are a number of、uh, games media representatives here today.、Uh, thank you for your help.、Uh, and you may remember about 10 years ago, actually, when I was still working on the Final Fantasy XIII series, we travelled around many different countries、uh, talking to the media about that game. まあ、大体、ファイナルファンタジー13のプロモーションに行ったので、13の質問を受けるんですけど、最後、そのメジャーな方の質問が終わったときに、一番最後の質問で、で、FF7 リメイクはいつになるんですかって必ず聞かれます。So, I remember, again, we're mainly talking about Final Fantasy 13, so the media played along and they asked questions about Final Fantasy 13, they're very well behaved, but always at the very end of every interview, they finish asking what they want about 13, everyone asks the same thing, like, when's Final Fantasy 7 being released? まあ、あたかもね、あの、セブンリメイクがやることが決まっていて、それがいつになるんだいみたいな質問を。They asked it as if it had already been decided and we'd announced the project. It was, oh, when's it coming out? It's not if it's coming out, it's when's it coming out? あの、やっときましたので、あの、皆さん喜んでください。So, yeah, we've finally done it, so I hope you're happy. This is going to be asking about remakes for other Final Fantasies now. プロジェクトで開始するというのは非常にこう悩みがありまして、あの実際にやるとなったらやっぱり何年もかかるっていうのが最初から分かってましたので、あのそういう意味では非常に皆さんからいろんな要望を受けたけど、10年間悩んできました。However,、um, it was a little bit of a headache really. And I was very torn about the prospect of actually approaching a Final Fantasy VII remake because I knew deep down how much time, how much effort and resources it would take to do a project like this justice. So I mean,、yeah. for about 10 years, I carried on umming and ahhing in my head. And even though I heard all the demand from the fans that they wanted to see one, I kind of held back on the idea for quite a long time. まあしかしリメイク版を作ることを決めた大きな理由はですね、mm. オリジナル版をプレイ。You want to remake a 16 without the side quest? <laughs> まあ物語のまあ感動を続けたいと思ったからです。But I think the the deciding factor that really made me change my thinking and want to go ahead on the remake project was when I decided that I wanted to have The modern generation of gamers and deliver them that same emotional resonance, that same experience from the Final Fantasy VII story that the players of the original had 20 years ago. まあ実は私の息子はですね。Is definitely it definitely worked. It's definitely successful. と発売と同い同じ年に生まれた27歳です。You really have to appreciate, like, how much effort they put into, like, everything that they did for Final Fantasy VII Remake, you know? But I'm, I'm a bit annoyed about this, really, but he's a really big Apex Legends player. <laughs> Well, it sounds like me, Chet. <laughs> His son sounds like me. Well, 
まあ皆さんがねあの当時プレイしたのと同じような感動をやっぱり抱かないだろうなと思いました。So yeah, if he was to play Final Fantasy VII, I thought obviously this is a game that came out in the year he was born. So I asked myself the question: if he was to play that game now, would he have the same emotional impact, the same resonance as the people who played it、uh, in 1997 when it was cutting edge? I don't think he would. まあ、なので最新の技術でリメイクすることでまあ1997年発売当時のね皆さんがプレイして得た感動と同じようなものをまあ私の息子のような彼の世代新しいゲーマーたちも同じような感動を体験してみてもらいたいと思ったからです。So the reason we actually went ahead was because I felt I wanted to give that same experience, deliver that same thrilling emotional story to people of my son's generation by updating and remaking the game with the latest technology. I definitely feel it. <laughs> so, in the same manner that I wanted to get this project off the ground, I was delighted to see there were a number of other core members of the original Final Fantasy VII development team who had the similar kind of vision to myself and they wanted to remake this game. And, and make it a really great game at the same time. It's my desktop picture. So, I'm going to make a little bit of a game. I'm going to make a little bit of a game. I'm going to make a little bit of a game. I'm going to make a little bit of a game. I'm going to make a little bit of a game. I'm going to make a little bit of a game. I was very happy at the response I got when I asked around about this project. I went to our original、um, scenario writer for Final Fantasy VII, Mr. Kazushige Nozima, and also our character director, Mr.、Uh, Tetsuya Nomura. And they both were very happy to come on board and, and just as passionate as I was. まあそしてですね、オリジナル版の時には開発者じゃなくて、えー、とプレイヤーとしてプレあのプレイヤーとしてあのー、ゲームをプレイして、その後ファンになった人がまあ新しい開発者としてスクエアニクスに入って、えー、その彼らたちとそのぜひリメイクの、えー、仕事を一緒にできるっていう部分。One other thing that I was really happy about the way that the, the project came together was it wasn't just the old guard who made the original game or coming back to give it one more try. We also got the opportunity to work together with a new generation of creators. These were people who had played the game when they were younger and become inspired by it and come to work at the com- a company. So we could all work together on a remake of this game that we all had such a history with. エンターテインメントなクリエイティブな仕事になりたいと思ったのと同じように、まあ、ファイナルファンタジー7をプレイしたことによって彼らたちは自分の将来をそこで決めたという部分では非常にあの嬉しいことだと思っています。So yeah, it really was a delight to see that because I saw very much the same thing happening as I remember from my childhood when I went to watch Star Wars and that inspired me to become involved in, in creative industry and, and to make things like that.、Uh, and the same thing happened with them when they played Final Fantasy VII. That made them want to come and do the same thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> do, 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 What happened to this place? It was Sephiroth. It can't be. He wants to finish what he started and rule over the planet. You coming? Way ahead of ya. <laughs> This is making me happy. <laughs> Let's get to work. You are truly a model soldier. People! We can handle this. I will reclaim our world. <laughs> oh man. God, man. Seven days away, chat. Seven fucking days away. So, if you ask me now to make that animation myself, I could no way do that. I think I was born at the right time, you know? <laughs> that before when I die, I want to choke a boat etched on top of my casket warrior of light written on my tombstone. <laughs> nice. I might do this similar thing, actually. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> まあ、現,在現在でねそれをリメイクしようと思った時にはやっぱり開発のスケジュールや非常にこう開発チームのサイズを見た場合にまあ。God, I'm getting so excited right now, chat. <laughs> so yeah, I already...
already understood that the remake project that trailer got me hyped up again <laughs> looking into the details of it we soon come to the conclusion that based on the schedule we had available the size of the development team and just the sheer time it would take it really was impossible to remake final fantasy 7 as one game まあ、しかしでも現実的なファイナルするためにオリジナル版の構要素をいろいろカットして、まあ、ダイジェストみたいなものにしてしまうと、またそれはそれで、ファンの方にはこう満足できないものになるだろうと思っています。Of yeah. course, we had the option of cutting it down to fit it into one game, but obviously we have to take out so many different elements that uh, the fans would really want to see and we felt that wasn't the right approach for us. Yeah. I totally agree. 落とさずにまた要素もカットせずにかつ 100% agree. Seven fucking days. Seven fucking days, Chad. To keep that quality level where it where it needed to be and not cut out any of the content the fans wanted to see was to make it multiple games. Seven days. Seven days. Seven days. <laughs> so that decision to make it a trilogy was very important because it allowed us, like I say, to remake the game without cutting any content and to keep it at the quality level that people would want to see. And also from a producer's perspective, and this may be most important to me, it allowed us to get the game done on time and on budget as well. <laughs> <laughs> It's also kind of like a, you know, Star Wars trilogy kind of, kind of thing, too. So. <laughs> this is something we've done recently, which is a collaboration between Final Fantasy VII and Apex Legends. It's funny they went with Apex, too, and not like, you know, Overwatch or uh, Fortnite or something. <laughs> Of course, to do a collaboration like this, obviously... You Apex is what we play, you know, every once in a while. So our, our guys and the Apex Legends team, so I think about six months ago, we started talking about how we should be, uh, we should be approaching this. It was a really difficult period. It was about a year of discussions overall, and not letting that secret out of the bag to my son in all of that time was probably the hardest. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Can't get on board with Apex 7. Yeah, I understand. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, that picture. The games industry and the way it moves and the way it evolves, it really is a case of the technology driving the artistic side of things and the fidelity, the quality of and the impact of the visuals and the sound that we can produce at any one time really does have to follow the, the tech. まあ、メモリーの制限や処理能力のまあ制限、またそのリスクのメディアのこう容量の制限、そしてまあメモリの読み込み速度の制限などいろんな技術的な制約はあの以前に比べてはもちろん緩くなってきてますけど、まあお金
でね父親がこう寒さで出ていたこう寒かろちょっていうのゲームっていう部分に話を戻します。Okay, so I'd like to return to where I started now with that discussion of how I went to see Star Wars as a boy、uh, and the reaction that my father had to that as this major、uh, impactful cultural work and the comparison then to the way he looked at games with a kind of exasperated way,、uh, expression. まあ、あの、絵画や演劇、<笑>そして小説や写真、まあ、映画などの、まあ、いろんな芸術作品があると思うんですけど、それらは、まあ、歴,歴史があって、まあ、重要な文化資産としてまあ皆様に認識されていてまあ人々の生活に根付いているメジャーなカルチャーとなっています。So there are a number of major mainstream cultural forms which really have become established and, and an integral part of people's lives and affect them. And that's things like、uh, film, video, photo, photography, and novels, etc. They've all got their own history. And, and their own independent appreciation as art and as culture. まあ、一方で、まあ、私が。Obviously, now it's b a r r e t t and Han Solo, Kate Sith, as t r i p l e By comparison, back when I got into video games myself, it was still very much a minor subculture with a very minor following. まあ、まるで、uh, to be honest, I think, I think I see Sid as Han Solo. <laughs> I think it very much was like you saw in the 1960s when you had、uh, people of the, the generation who were parents then and they saw the, the music of the Beatles and they thought, yeah, that's just a, a bad influence on the youth of today. And games were seen in the same way. I think that's a better fit because he flies an airship, you know. <laughs> Now, I remember though, my, my older brother back in the day, he like, grew his hair out long in those days and my, my dad scolded him because I said,、oh, you shouldn't be growing out like that, you look stupid. <laughs> まあ、ああ、ね、そそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそそまあ、もしくはそのいろんな議論がされたりとか、まあ、人々の生活に、ね、良い影響を与えるという部分でこう私の仕事として貢献したいと思っています。So、my goal, my dream, and what I wanted to achieve with my job was to take it from that position and make it so that games were something that people would talk about every day around the dinner table. There'd be heated debates about games in the same way, and they'd be something that really would have that positive influence on people's lives.、Uh, and, and my work is, is very much aimed towards that. まあ、今晩ですね、ここに、えー、こういう場をね、用意していただいたバフタには感謝しています。So I am very, very grateful to、uh, the organizers today, to BAFTA. また、ビデオゲームの素晴らしさを伝えて、まあ、認知度を高,高めて、まあ、多くの方にね、あのー、こうやって支援をもらっているということに非常に感謝しています。And I'm not just grateful for giving me this opportunity today. I really am grateful for all the good work that you guys do in raising the profile, the awareness of video games, and, and everything you do to support us in the industry. So, I'm like, it was the end, but no. <laughs> 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 so, if I look back over my career in games now, I think we have come a very long way in terms of what we can do now and where we are compared to, to back then. まあ、私の父がですね、まだ生きていたら、このビデオゲームの現代のこのビデオゲームの世界を見て、彼の目にはね、どのように映ったのだろうかっていうのは、今でも考えることがあります。I always think though, unfortunately my father is no longer with us, but if he were around today, I always wonder what he'd see and what kind of expression he'd show me looking at the, the modern milieu of video games today. まあ、ビデオゲーム業界はですね、文化の一部にもうすでに、ね、なりつつあると思っていますが、まあ、技術とゲーム開発自体はまだまだやるべきことがあると思いますので、まあ、皆さんと一緒にね、この業界を盛り上げていきたいと思っています。So, I'm very confident that video games are slowly but surely becoming that part of mainstream culture now. But I still think there's so much left to do for us in the industry.、Uh, there's more places to go, more things to do to, to keep speeding that up. So, together with the help of everyone here today, I, I want to make games even better, even more exciting in the future. And that's a journey you can go on together with me. Thank you very much for everything today. Why so serious? <laughs> Sorry, chat. <laughs> That was a good commercial break, actually. <laughs> Amazing.、Um, I love seeing the old stuff back again.
It's great, isn't it? It's brilliant. And then the comparison is also brilliant. Um, so thank you very much for, for your time and for your thoughts. I guess I'd like to hop straight into it. So I know that the audience have got questions as well. So I want to make sure I give them enough time to chat as well. Um, and I'd like to pick up on what you, where you finished off, if that's all right. And this idea about sort of games becoming mainstream and that crossover. Here in the West, Final Fantasy VII was a big part of the beginning of that journey. So I just wanted to get a sense from you as to why you think that title, out of all the others you've helped make and all the others that were out at that time, why was it that one you think that struck a chord with so many people to start that ball rolling? Because, yeah, the so, well, the presentation of the presentation was very interesting. The story was, so, the game was not so much of a mania. The story was, 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 the story 何が起こってるか理解できない。要はゲームの中だけで通用する文法、テクニック。だけどゲームファンにはもちろんそれは通じるんだけど、そうじゃない人たちにはこう通じてないんじゃないかっていうのは非常に感じたこと。No, so I think what I would say about that, uh, and something that I really felt directly, was certainly looking at the, the difference between films and games back then. And, and again, my father is, is a great indicator of that. He was not a a real uh, cinemaphile, uh, like he wasn't a big game fan either. He kind of approached these things from very much the, was the, the, the middle ground. Uh, and I think the difference back then though is, with a film, you can watch it, and even if you aren't told what's going on, you can look at it and you can see what's happening and, and understand that immediately, even if you're not um, deeply invested in that. And at the time, that wasn't the same with video games. There was certain like visual grammar and logic within games that if you were into games, you knew what was going on, you knew the game, you could watch from the sides and, and pick up on it. But uh, if you weren't part of the in-group with that, you really wouldn't have had a chance. And I think that was a major difference. So it was so iconic, it paved the way for newer RPGs after. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can, I'm sure. <laughs> I think, was, it, was Seven the first... Um, Seven was the first 3D game, right? Of that. In, in the RPG game or am I wrong about that? Before Final Fantasy Seven, you'd basically walk around what we call a world map, which was like a, a map, a simulation of what the world's supposed to look like. Uh, and you see your character walking. It was, around, okay, yeah. And you'd step on a, a, like a little square icon. And in those days, it was like 16 pixels by 16 pixels. And it was drawn to represent a staircase, like going down underground. You'd icon would sound, would overlap with that. Then there'd be a, a fairly primitive sound effect, that, 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 that kind of sound effect. And then you go down into a dungeon area. で、それが我々は当たり前のように、あれ、ダンジョンに入ったんだなって自然に受け入れたんだけど、そうじゃない父親は何が起こってるかわからない。で、まあそこからもう私は何が操作してんだろうってとこからやっぱりその辺のこう
一人でなんとかできるっていう場面が多くてそれこそあのアニメーションが気に入らなかったら自分でアニメーションを作ってやるってこともできた時代なんですけど今はやっぱここまでになると自分な,なんかこうミスした部分をあのミスしたセクションを自分から乗り出してってそれを仕上げてしまうってことはもうできないのでそういう意味では確かに昔の方がこう少人数自分一人の力でコントロールできたっていう部分ではあの羨ましいって思いますね。No, I would say one thing I am kind of jealous of of directors back then and things that we can't do now, which is weird because I am one of those directors back then,、um, is that it was something that the director had a lot more direct input into the product. Like I say, we only had、oh, 20 people there, and for example, if the animation wasn't up to scratch, you didn't like the way a character moved, you could jump in and program it and change that animation yourself. Obviously, with the massive teams we have and the level of specialization now, that's not something we can do anymore. So, I really feel that that ability to just jump in and, and, and directly influence something as a director is、uh, something I wish we still had now, but unfortunately, we don't.、Mm. That makes sense. Because now it was a homage to the older ones and the crystals. The first thing I have to do is install the right software to deal with it. And that's where I normally throw my hands in the air and say, someone else can do that. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Change, okay. Change you've seen in, in your yeah,、career. I guess. Yeah, I can see why they did that then. And the things you were able to do with the, the software and the power of the Pro Computer that you use.、Uh, have you seen any other changes in terms of how games are made that have, that have pushed the medium forward in that time? Or is it really about the, the technical? I'll skip a little bit. The things, and again, my idea down for everything. Most of these questions are.、Um, I can show this. <laughs> Yeah, I could show that. <laughs> That's extremely loud, though. God damn. I wish they would、uh, <laughs> make these videos louder so that way I don't. When the commercials come up, I don't have to. You know, my ears aren't blasted away. <laughs> Or they could make the commercials quieter. <laughs> Look at their Buster Sword. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> If any more of you are killed by those punks, I'll drag you back from hell and kill you again. I saw that coming. Involved in, I actually saw it secondhand via an interview I saw with the director. But、uh, I hear that the director of Marvel's recent film, The Marvels,、um, was a big fan of Advent Children, and they said that that had inspired them and、uh, and given them、uh, kind of hints in their work. So I think it's kind of cool. Like you say,、uh, it's always been、uh, the other way around, and certainly the the creators in the games industry very much have that respect for for people in films and the way they do things. I think we are seeing that、uh, that change of generations now. Though you've got this up and coming generation of people in the film industry who、uh, were brought up on on games, and, and they've got a lot of respect and a lot of love for games. And we're starting to see that、uh, more of a, of a mutual relationship, a cross pollination happening now. So I think、uh, we are definitely starting to see that coming through. And、uh, and there are examples. Yes, I see. Obviously, via the via the medium. That is a big ass Buster, Buster Sword. <laughs> <laughs> and last one for me. And I, I'm assuming that everybody in this audience. I can be spoilerific, right? If you don't know what happens in Final Fantasy, I don't know what you're doing in this crowd. <laughs> <laughs> But in case that happens to be you, for whatever reason, then put your fingers in your ears for the next 20 seconds.、Um, you talked about in your、uh, presentation about the chocobo sacrifice in the 90s, and also you traumatized a generation of gamers. <laughs> that's the true size of it, really. <laughs> really, that's the true size of it. <laughs> 最後に、北さんに聞きたいんですけど、90年代にね、あのファイナルファン。I'm sorry, I didn't, I wasn't paying attention to the question, but that's the true size of the Buster Sword, seriously? Holy shit, that's Cloud must be a big ass person. <laughs> And can you imagine how big Barrett is in,、uh, in relation? The chocobo sacrifice in the 90s. And also, you traumatized a generation of gamers. <laughs> By what happens to Eric? Oh, I see. <laughs> How do you feel about that? 
、最後に皆さんに聞きたいんですけど、90年代にね、あのファイナルファンジーアドベンチャーで、あんなけなげなチョコボがあのまあ自分の身を犠牲にして、あの惨めな最後を向けて迎えたっていうのがあったし、でそれも十分トラウマを受けてるんですけど、それよりもね、あのオリジナルセブンでね、あのまあ一つのゲーマーの世代のほぼ全員にとんでもないトラウマをさせたんじゃないですか、A と C で。<笑>どういう心境ですか。どういう心境ですか。<笑>ああ難しいですね。あの。ファーザークのエンジオは、ワンヘルブストロングバック。いや、really。I need to make my back that strong. <笑> so that's a very difficult one to answer. But、uh, obviously, in Final Fantasy VII, after that iconic scene happens,、uh, you have to change discs. That's a very last、right. scene of disc one of the game. なのでそこで皆さんこう冷静になってもらいたいなという気持ちです。So yeah, I hope that people would like、uh, calm down and return to、uh, a more stable mental state at that point. That was the idea. <笑><笑>それだけです。That's all I have to say. Very good. <笑> right. Okay, so we've got a couple of,、um, uh, of... Of mic holders out there who will find you if your hand is up. We've got about slightly less time than we planned, so let's sort of want to get your questions in. I suggest you get your hands up nice and early. Get that awkward silence. <laughs> our first question is going to be from Lauren, who is from the Final Fantasy Union. First of all, fantastic,、uh, wonderful, wonderful、uh, presentation, wonderful questions.、Um, yeah.、Uh, so I, I mean, it's my question, but I just wanted to say、uh, in 2011, Uh, me and my husband Daryl, we interviewed you for Final Fantasy XIII 2 with Motoko Toriyama.、Mm. We did not ask about Final Fantasy VII Remake, so you're welcome. <laughs>、uh, okay. <laughs> Good enough for me.、Um, okay, so this question is quite multifaceted. I'm, I'm sorry in advance, Gavin.、Um, but so, legacy seems very important to you.、Uh, it serves as a prominent theme in Final Fantasy VII. And according to some of your original design documents in that game from 1994,、um, it was even meant to be more extreme with actions taken by the father influencing the world the son grew up in, something that you said、oh. was influenced by the Godfather Part II. Notions of that are then carried on through to Final Fantasy VIII and X, as shown by Swan Laguna and Peter Sinjek. But it's also important in the real world. When we talked to Sakaguchi, Uh, he actually spoke about his legacy and how he wanted to ensure that Final Fantasy lived on, which is why he named you as his essential heir. The question is therefore multifaceted. Where did, you, where did your interest in legacy、um, come from?、Uh, and at Square Enix, what steps are you taking to ensure that the legacy of the franchise is in good hands for many years to come? <laughs> That was a really long question. <laughs> Hey, Pop Bear, thank you for the contribution. Appreciate it. <laughs> How you doing tonight? まあ、例えて言うと、ファイナルマンタジー、昨年発売された16だと、その吉田プロデューサーが作って。80% raised, yo, we're almost there, chat. <laughs> we're almost there. その殻を打ち破るような、とんがったこうところを目指してやってるので、まあ、そこをこうぶち破ってくれることによって、FF としての価値がこう一つしていくという感じです。Hope you're doing well, Pop Bear. やっぱり期待しているので、やっぱその FF としての何かを守ってくださいじゃなくて、むしろ FF として、This is a long answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first half of your question is a lot harder to answer, but I can definitely talk about the second part, which is the ongoing legacy, the future of Final Fantasy.、Uh, and I'm sorry, I can't come up with what these are actually called, but I don't know if you guys know, in certain games, there's like a hexagon marker with different lines coming out of it for different parameters, like your strength, your magic, your defense, etc. And it like represents the power of a character. And I kind of look at like things. In that sense, I wish I knew what they were properly called, but I don't, so we'll have to get away with that.、Uh, and the idea is if we keep getting the same people to make Final Fantasy again and again, they can achieve the same results, but they'll never expand on that and they'll never increase that kind of, I think it's like a bar chart, you call it whatever it is. 
but mm. it won't get any bigger. For example, I see. one bar will never stick out further. It'll always be within the same parameters. That's why I want different people with different ideas who can take Final Fantasy in different directions to work on successive games. That it's makes sense. That same uh, vein with Final Fantasy 16, we had um, producer Yoshida Naoki doing that game, and I think he took it in a new direction. Um, yeah. And again, with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, um, Hamaguchi Naoki, he's the director of that, and I think he's, again, another person I can trust to take the game further than it would have gone before. So I think those new talent coming in and those new people uh, heading up the ship each time really is such an important uh, thing for that legacy, that ongoing future of Final Fantasy. It shouldn't be the same person every time. Yeah. <laughs> Mm, that makes sense. We were, I think we were talking like a similar thing about this yesterday, actually, like how long Final Fantasy is going to continue going on. And it sounds like they're not, yeah, they're not, I mean, it sounds like they're not playing to uh, like cancel the series any, at least anytime soon, if not ever. You know what I mean? <laughs> At least not in our lifetime, hopefully. <laughs> That's part of your question there. Uh, and I think there is not, there's not really one big push to have this massive theme of legacy or passing on to the next generation over multiple Final Fantasy games. It kind of just worked out that way. And I think, um, like everything with Final Fantasy, it really is down to the director uh, of that game at that time. So I'd imagine that generally, if you've got a director and he's perhaps just had a child uh, that's changed his perspective on life, he's going to probably want to put those kind of themes into the game. So I'd imagine you've got those stories about struggles between fathers and sons and, and then handling over to the next generation. I'd imagine those directors probably had that kind of issues in their personal lives at that time. Getting a hype for Final Fantasy 45. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's get hype for Final Fantasy 45, chat. I had something I wanted to say about companies. Coming out in 2090. <laughs> Here's one thing you need to do before you buy. Uh, this is. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> right, hands up. We have got as a lady just there in the white top. There we are, perfect. Um, hi, uh, um, this is a bit of a crazy <laughs> story, but I remember that back in 2010 there was an opening in Oxford Street HMV, and I believe you were there. At the time, I went there with my mom, and I was only 10 years old, so I didn't know a thing about <laughs> Final Fantasy, so hi again. But, um, yeah, there's one thing I remember playing Final Fantasy 13 a couple of years after when I could actually understand the game. <laughs> I remember that I loved the lightning as a protagonist. It feels so strong and cool. And looking back, actually, you've actually directed a lot of games where the protagonist is quite cool and hard headed. So I just wanted to ask you um, what makes a good protagonist? あの、特にあの、FX シリーズの、あの、作品 yeah, so I think um, in terms of the, the characters, the main characters in the games that I work on, I've been influenced a huge amount by uh, the main character designer I work with, Nomura Tetsuya. When he designs a character, he doesn't just design the visuals of that character, he really goes into every aspect of it, who they are, what they think, and et cetera. And so I think in that sense, he's got such a great sense for character design that I, I really am uh, very heavily uh, taken by that. やっぱりあの、デザイナー
彼らデザインをしていたので、そこはやっぱりこう発想がね、やっぱり派と違うんだなっていうところはあります。I think, in terms of that difference between my、um, views on these things and the way Mr. Nomura looks at character design, that really does come out in, as you say, Lightning from Final Fantasy XIII. Because I deliberately wanted to make the, the main character, the protagonist of Final Fantasy XIII,、uh, a woman.、Uh, we'd had female characters who、uh, kind of played a prominent role as part of, a, of an ensemble cast before in Final Fantasy. I think with VI, obviously, you had、uh, it's Terra here, right? Isn't it? Yeah, Terra. Um, <laughs> she obviously played a big role, but、um, we never had a main character standalone female protagonist. I really wanted to, to have that as a main character. So I asked Mr. Nomura Tetsuya,、um, I gave him the brief for the character, this is the kind of character I want. And I was really was very happy with, with what he came back because he designed it. It wasn't, as again, you think of a stereotypical male protagonist, it's some big macho guy, and you thought, okay, is he just going to do a female version of that? It's not that at all. He really based her appearance on.、Uh, I think it was, it was like based on, on female athletes, like tennis players, and that kind of physique and that kind of,、uh, of body shape.、Uh, and again, his design of that character was just so refined and so well done that, yeah, I thought he could do this so much better than I can. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much.、Uh, gentleman with glasses down the front, in the sort of front middle here. I,、uh, I want to say, we, we all talk about, we, we selected the original Star Wars as our favorite films <laughs> in, in the、uh, Star Wars <laughs> franchise <coughs> here. Um, and they came out at a time when cinema was already the mainstream,、uh, but the audiences had grown a little bit bored with cinema and they started leaving the theaters. I feel that、mm, perhaps a lot of that is happening with games right now as well and the industry as a whole. Do you feel that games have had their Star Wars yet? And do you think the Star Wars of video games will look realistic like all the games now that are trying to simulate reality through technological advancements? Or do you think the Star Wars of games might be something none of us have ever expected? Actually, that might have been something I could show.、Uh, it was fine to show. <laughs> I noticed the commercials are becoming a lot more frequent now for some reason. I guess we're getting to the end here. <laughs> ベクトルの,あの起点は作れたと思ってますね。あのなぜかというとあの、6から7に移行する際に、そのプレイステーションになるときに、そのままの以前の、6以前の、まあ、ピクセルの表現のまま、よりその進化していくっていう選択肢もあって、それは非常にあのスクエアの中でもすごい議論されたんですよね。ピクセルの延長上での、まあ、要するにピクセルアートのこう非常にあのグレードアップ版。として進化していく方向と、実は当時の 3D キャラクターがさっきの映像見てわかるとおり、3D キャラって400ポリゴンぐらい。You know what one of the bad things about YouTube is is that's actually、uh, just happened recently.、Uh, commercials are becoming a lot more frequent, so they're kind of forcing you to pay for YouTube Premium in a way. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's what sucks about YouTube. <laughs> I'm not going to say Final Fantasy VII was that game. Because I remember commercials were not frequent at all. It didn't used to be frequent at all. Now, now it's becoming like every five minutes, and it's like, oh my god. As an indication of the direction I thought games should be going in.、Uh, obviously, when we decided on how we were going to do it,、um, we discussed very seriously actually in the company about. Are we real dudes? 30 second ones? Yeah, exactly. I mean. It, yeah, I mean, you're right, Megar, because it's not, it's not just how, the frequency, but it's also the length of the commercials. Because I've had commercials where、uh, they, were, they were frequent and they were long, and you could not skip them.、Uh, I think the longest commercial I remember that I couldn't skip was probably like a whole minute, maybe? Or at least 45 seconds, one of those. But yeah, it's just like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> it kind of makes me not want to watch YouTube anymore. I mean, of course, I'm not going to, but <laughs> I'm not going to not watch YouTube, but it, it does kind of make me not want to、uh, sometimes. <laughs> Double commercials, yeah, yeah, exactly. 
Hey, Ichiban, thank you for the contribution. <laughs> so that, that was, again, we all know the decision I made back then uh, 27 years ago. With thank you very much, Ichiban. Like said, Happy affiliate anniversary. This is the first day I saw. Really? With, uh, those Snap, look, bitch. Get the little fuck little up. You're about to time. freaking we'll lose. Let's go. <laughs> Use Magneto. What are you going to move? Very much, that this was what are you going to move? It's right. Kind of a, a statement of intent with the, um, I lost. The Basic numbers. I didn't really lose. Skill issue. Much further, <laughs> I didn't realize he's got 33 here. Now, but back then, Damn. Okay, you'll take the hit of the fact that it's not going to be. <laughs> How you doing tonight, Ichiban? Uh, thank you for the. Uh, thank you for saying happy uh, anniversary. I appreciate it. Yeah, to be honest, I did not know it was my anniversary today until Twitch notified me right before I started streaming. <laughs> but yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. I didn't realize this was the first day you subbed, too. Like, holy shit. This is also the anniversary of each for Ichiban first subbing. <laughs> thank you very, thank you very much. Personally, I think we set out on that journey. I used to go to bed watching YouTube app and wake up to a two-hour ad. Two-hour ad, really? Wow. Get an ad blocker on your phone and PC. You watch it from web browser instead of an app. Yeah, I mean, I need to, but it costs money. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I'm kind of thinking about just going with YouTube Premium, even though uh, I don't want to. I think YouTube Premium is like, what, $10 a month, something like that? But, yeah, Magneto was too strong. <laughs> yeah, really, Ichiban, yeah. <laughs> I, sub I subbed to you on your first affiliate stream for uh, six months. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I really appreciate it, Ichiban. <laughs> Honestly worth it if you consume a lot of YouTube I've been using it for like four years. Yeah. Well But linking back to your question, I think as I say, we kind of achieved what we set out. I mean I watch some YouTube, but not a lot. So we may be as you as you predict in a in a time now where we are looking for that next big step and, and people are starting to get uh, content with what we have now and we need to look for that next big big change. So I've got, we have got time for one, what I'm going to define as a quick <laughs> question. <laughs> so, uh, so who, who thinks they've got that question for me? Uh, right, I've, I've got, I've got a, I don't think we'll have a good... Black jumper. Uh, so here we are. Perfect. Thank you very much. Now, I'm not being, I'm, I like being bang on time. So no pressure, mate. But it's all on you. <laughs> all right, thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, quick question. Or quick question. When you first got the Silicon Graphics Workstations 26, 27, 23 years ago or so, you created 3D um, an, um, um, images of Locke, Terra, and all the other characters from FF6. Plus, I'm pretty sure there was even a small tech demo. Could that ever be, have you still got the assets, and could they be used to make a 3D, um, like a 3D remake rather than a full remaster of Final Fantasy VI? Rob, I don't want to wait 20 years. <laughs> 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 is there ever going to be Final Fantasy VI remake? <laughs> so, if I said something now and it would just be lip service, saying, yeah, I might be able to do that, that's possible. I know what's going to happen. You guys are going to get your phones out. You're going to bash out a tweet or two, and then in 20 minutes it'll be around the world that I'm actually decided to make one. So, I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to give uh, all of us to give a big, war a big round of applause to Gavin for all his hard work. Uh, okay, that's it. <laughs> that was pretty good, actually. Most of the questions I wasn't really interested in, but uh, yeah, I mean, I like the, uh, I like the video a lot.